Uh, you know, I'm, I'm part of that, that Obama coalition. I come out of the black community in terms of my support. If you notice, I have more people supporting me in the black community that have announced for me because they know me. They know who I am. Three former chairs of the Black Caucus, the only African-American woman that ever been elected to the United States Senate. A whole range of people. No, my point that's is, not true. The other that's one is true. here. <laughs> I said the first. Thank I said the first African-American elected. First, so my point is, my point is, one of the reasons I was picked to be vice president was because of my relationship, long-standing relationship with the black community. I was part of that coalition. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on when you're tuning in. My name is Jonathan Torres Herrera, and you are watching or listening to the JTH show. Today, let's talk about Kamala Harris VP nomination and what we can learn from New Zealand's COVID resurgence. But first, roll that intro. All right. So uh, just as a reminder, you guys can catch this episode um, in all major podcast platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and something called Radio Public, which, you know, maybe is big, but I wasn't familiar with it. But hey, we're on there as well. And as always, thank you for listening. So let's talk about our first topic today, which is the fact that Joe Biden has officially announced his uh, running, mate, uh, running mate nomination uh, for vice president, who is the California senator, Kamala Harris. So there's a few things that I want to touch base on here, a couple points. Um, you know, as, as some of you guys have been watching the show for some time know that I'm not to the extreme right. I'm not to the extreme left. I really genuinely consider myself to be someone that can be level-headed and see uh, that there is potential and good on both sides of the aisle when it comes to politics, right? Some people can say, screw you, you're wrong. If you're not with the left, you know, you're an extremist, you're, you're a white supremacist. And if you're with the you know, people on the right will say, well, if you're with the left, you're a lefty. Uh, you know what? Whatever. You know, I, I'm saying it now because then again, the follow, with the following points. So with Kamala Harris, what are my thoughts? It's what I'll uh, follow af uh, after after the points. So some of the stuff that we've learned, and I have rechecked myself because I really knew a lot of this from following the debates, the Democratic debates, when she was running actually for uh, the the presidential nomination, which which she lost. Um, but you know, obviously now she's back as the vice president. And while she was running, we learned a couple things. Uh, for instance, things on healthcare. She is she does support a health court health care reform however she doesn't necessarily support medical for or medicare for all as bernie sanders did or at least uh he was the, the the guy the main guy that said hey everybody should be getting medicare right so she does support some kind of health reform she does agree that you know what we have now while it's kind of getting us through it's not something that, you know, we can we can be on forever. You know, that is a long term solution. So that's her stance so far on healthcare. Some people, you know, critique her because, you know, she at one point in one of the debates said, Oh yeah, I am for it. And then later on retracted that and said, I didn't really understand the question. So no, not completely Medicare for all for all. Why? Because there's a lot of people, even people on the left side of the aisle that believe that Medicare for all is too extreme, right? Um, so, you know, she wants to be careful in how I think she approaches healthcare. All right, moving on. Immigration, which will be a big one, right, in the United States. Um, she, one, supports a path for citizenship for all illegal immigrants. She supports the DREAM Act. And she spoke very strongly about the kids in cages situation, right, that to this day is still a problem. You know, when it comes to stuff like that, um, when it comes to a path to citizenship, in my opinion, um, it's very, it's a very broad statement, right? It's, it's, it's not really laying down what exactly she means by that. And, you know, eventually I'm going to do another video. I'm sure because this is not something that's going to be, you know, done for today. This is just the beginning, right? Where we're going to be able to really dig into another debate, of course, um, which I'm sure she, she's bound to do with like, you know, Mike Pence. What exactly does she mean by supporting a path to to citizenship, which, you know, you know, arguably it matters to many people, whether you're for it or against it. You want to know 
you know, what is, does this really mean? Does she mean that everybody, like an amnesty act kind of thing? Like, what does that mean? So that's, that's going to be a big one, in my opinion, um, probably just as big as healthcare. And then, you know, the, the, another thing that a lot of people um, are going to be uh, rooting against her for is her stance on the Second Amendment, right? Or one of the things on the Second Amendment, and that is um, the fact that she wants to put a ban, assault, or a ban on assault weapons. So I, I've said it before, I'm a gun owner. So I do believe in the Second Amendment. I do believe that you have a right to, to bear arms. You have a right to protect yourself, uh, your family. Do I believe that, you know, that means, I mean, it includes assault, you know, rifles or weapons? No, not necessarily. I don't think that, you know, that uh, having, um, I don't know, 30, 50 weapons in your house is also something that, you know, that the Second Amendment should protect. Again, all things that someone's in, anybody out there can argue with me and say, no, if, if I can, you know, have a right by the Constitution to have, um, you know, weapons, I, I don't care. You're not going to limit me to how many. Okay, that, you know, that's going to be another conversation. But her stance is we need to ban assault weapons, right? And again, I can't say that I not necessarily don't support that. So does that mean that I don't support, by the way, the Second Amendment? I want people to ban guns? No. Okay. All right. So other key points is that she supports a federal descheduling of cannabis, which essentially means that, you know, we no longer see uh, at a federal level that, you know, pot, weed is at the same um, level uh, when it comes to, um, you know, heroin and you know those other big, more serious drugs, right? So she believes that that is no longer the case. Now, doesn't mean, by the way, that this doesn't apply to like how a state will look at it. So it's very important for you to understand that. Okay. That's what it's at a federal level. All right. So, you know, there are some things, some videos right now that are floating out there, right? There's already people from all sorts of, of you know, political levels, um, big names like Nancy Pelosi, um, all the way to the Trump kids, right? Who are not necessarily in his administration, Trump Jr., stuff like that. I mean, everyone is already going to be, you know, talking about this and obviously naturally having an opinion. One of the things that kind of jumped out at me immediately is people saying, oh, she can actually, she cannot be vice president because, you know, there's always a, the potential that she can eventually be president if something were to happen to Joe Biden. Why? Because her father is from Jamaica and the mom is from India. So, you know, there's something about time there, like how many years they were here before Kamala uh, was conceived. Something like that, something weird. Listen, um, I don't even know, you know, what are the real legalities behind that? Um, I would have to, you know, deep dive into that even more. I wanted to get the show out, but I wanted to put these facts out there and some of these points. But when it comes to that, in my opinion, and I and I hope the majority of you guys would agree, does it really effing matter anymore at this point? Um, what, you know, who or where are you from? At the end of the day, I mean, I think probably a lot of people watching this very video right now cannot tell me that they have two, four, five, six, seven generations of pure, quote unquote, Americans that were all, you know, bred and raised here. Um, I mean, maybe, maybe there's going to be someone out there that says wrong me right here. And it's like, all right, well, congratulations. But, you know, even the president, right, has been accused of saying, oh, how can you put people in cages and be anti, you know, immigration? Well, look at your wife and hello, your mother. So it's just like, you know, come on, that, that, it, when I saw that, to me, a little disgusting, you know, uh, but that is floating around out there. And it's going to be, in my opinion, very similar to the whole birther movement, right, that happened with Obama. So that's already there, right? And, and that's another thing that many people from the left would argue against the right, that it's like, man, every single time there's some kind of nomination that is not like pure, clearly white, you guys have to bring up something with like, you're not from here. It, you're a little, you know, you're a little tan, you're bronze, you're not from here. You know, every, when Marco Rubio was running, of course, no one said anything because Marco Rubio is more on a Republican side, right? And it's not something you actually heard um, from the left side. Not as much, right? Not as, again, you commonly hear from uh, more conservative people speaking about Democrat no uh, nominees for not just the presidency, but, you know, other, other um, I guess, positions in government. So, you know, I wanted to bring that up because I thought it was uh, kind of a little gross, you know, that they're, that they're saying that. But anyways, let's move on. So the next thing that I want to bring up is this video, right? Besides the first one that you guys kind of just saw, 
um, this the, the next video that people are trying to make something of it. Um, and people are saying, and by the way, Trump today, uh, August uh, 11, said, oh, you know, she was very nasty to Joe. And people are trying to retweet this video as like proof that she was being nasty. So let's watch that video now. So on the issue of race, I couldn't agree more that this is an issue that is still not being talked about truthfully and honestly. I, there is not a black man I know, be he a relative, a friend, or a coworker who has not been the subject of some form of profiling or discrimination. Growing up, my sister and I had to deal with the neighbor who told us her parents couldn't play with us because, she, because we were black. And I will say also that, that in this campaign, we've also heard, and I'm gonna now direct this at Vice President Biden. Um, I do not believe you are a racist. And I agree with you when you commit yourself to the importance of finding common ground. Mm -hmm. But I also believe, and it's personal, and it, I was actually very, it was hurtful, to hear you talk about the reputations of two United States senators who built their reputations and career on the segregation of race in this country. And it was not only that, but you also worked with them to oppose busing. And, you know, there was a little girl in California who was part of the second class to integrate her public schools. And she was bused to school every day. And that little girl was me. Okay, so, you know, that was something that, uh, you know, there in that video they cut short, but a lot of people applaud. I remember at the time, uh, following Twitter and stuff like that, and, you know, people were like, wow, that's, that was like really big, that was impactful. Uh, people were applauding her for that. Um, and, you know, that is right now being in, in some way weaponized for saying, ah, I see, like, how can they even be, you know, uh, president and vice president? Which, you know, me and my wife were talking about earlier and we're like, oh, come on, man, people, whatever happened is the whole thing that I've been saying about like the cancel and the extremists and, you know, whatever side of the aisle you're on that, hey, if me and you disagree, hell, if you right now disagree with me with this video, it's like, we can't be friends. It's like, that's ridiculous, man. That's, it's absurd to go to the point where it's like, oh, these two guys at one point or another were debating, which is, I mean, that's, they're meant to point out their flaws and whatever history they have in politics. And it's like, so you did that, you can't be friends anymore, you guys. Like, this isn't, this cannot happen. It's a, it's ridiculous. All right. That is, that is my point. Uh, furthermore, I do have some reservations as to what is happening here with Biden, uh, you know, having Kamala as her, as his nominee. And, you know, here are some of the stuff that I don't agree with. So while I'm, I'm happy, I'm genuinely happy to see that there is a, a minority woman that is going to be, you know, that is nominated at this point and potentially can hold such a high office, you know, as, as vice president, um, I am, you know, there's a part of me, all right? And this is where maybe people are like, that's a conservative. Thank you. Maybe, all right? Hold on. Hold your horses, conservatives. Yes, there is a part of me that's like, man, I think Joe is, like you saw in that first video, uh, you know, really playing that, that you know, the, the black card. I'm going to say it. You know, he's really saying, I'm for the blacks, the black, the black, the black this, I'm black for that. And her nominating uh, Kamala in a way it's like, and my running mate is also black or partially black, you know, to be fair. Um, and, you know, she she runs, you know, as a black nominee. And hey, and she's a woman. So <sighs> come on. I can't be neither now sexist uh, nor racist. So, and, you know, sh and she did kind of like, you know, I guess uh, gave him credit for that, right? Hey, I don't think you're, you're racist. And to be honest, I actually don't think personally that Joe Biden is a racist person, right? Um, now, it doesn't mean that, hey, we don't know his skeletons in his closet and we don't know what he says at night. Whatever, man. I don't know what you say at night. You don't know what I say at night. But right now, publicly, I don't see that Joe Biden is a racist individual. So Kamala Harris agrees with that as well. But Again, it doesn't mean that uh, there's not something there that he's just trying to do, you know, what is going to make him look really well. Now, my wife's like, uh, hey, that's like every person, freaking president, even Obama, everybody, right? Um, you know, with Obama saying, you know, I am the minority in this ticket. Let's bring the white vote in. And, you know, he did that with Joe Biden. So, you know, or, you know, rather I said that, but still, right? That's that's my stance. That's that's one thing that kind of rubs me wrong, right? Because I feel that from now on, anything that you throw at him, even when Trump tries to throw stuff at him, he might, figuratively speaking, of course, get Hamlin's like, ah, eh, you can't hit me. I, I have a, you know, a minority woman. Eh, it's in front of me. So that's my point. 
that at least that's my point of view. You don't have to agree with it, but that's how I see it. Okay. All right. Let's move on now to New Zealand. So New Zealand, after 102 days of being COVID free, um, it has uh, resurfaced in their country, specifically in a um, uh, area called um, Auckland. Auckland. It's not Oakland. Is Auckland? Is A U C K L A N D? Auckland. Okay. So let's get the details. So again, 102 days. Um, unfortunately, a family, uh, four people in the same family, tested positive. Uh, the first person being a man or a person rather in their 50s. I don't think they said it was a man or a woman, but a person in their 50s. And that person was tested twice. And the second time is when that person finally came back positive. Now they tested the person, you know, multiple times because the symptoms were there. Um, so it highlights, right? Well, we, some of us know already that, hey, you can be tested and you're like, got tested. And it's like, you're, you're, you're good to go, but it doesn't mean that you're like, but I still feel something. So, you know, a lot of us have, uh, at least seen that before, right? That people are being tested, but they're still coming up uh, positive. So, you know, there's four people and then in the same household, other three individuals so far have still tested uh, negative. I don't know how after how many tests. So, you know, there is a mixture within the same household so far. It is an unknown source. They do not know where the the family uh, was infected or where they contracted COVID, which is leaving a lot of people or putting people rather back into a little bit of panic mode. Like, what do you guys mean? Like, did he travel? No, no travel. That's the first thing that I looked into. And again, allegedly, uh, there was a press conference and uh, the PM there said, uh, yeah, they, you know, there was no travel. Apparently, <laughs> here's something else that may be a little bit more scarier. They're actually not the new uh, patient zero or what they're calling the uh, the source of an infection. They don't believe that that family or for that matter, any of the one in the, uh, individuals there are the source of the infection. Um, they believe that the source case is still probably out there and uh, they do expect more cases to start popping up again. Again, this is happening so far in a location called Auckland and that location now has moved into a level three uh, the entire country was a level one level one, meaning, you know, we're kind of just keeping some social distancing. Don't forget about COVID, but for the most part, life have had returned to normal. And again, whatever you consider normal, we all have our different definitions of what normal is, but for now, because of this, New Zealand has come out publicly and said, yeah, we were kind of like, you know, uh, kind of showing off to the whole world and, and a lot of newspapers, you know, all around the world were saying, wow, look at New Zealand, like, holy moly, like a hundred and something days and counting up until they got to 102 and like no cases. It's quite a while to say we have nothing. We're good to go. Like no one come in here. Their ports were closed and they're like, no one come in here, but we're fine. And then this comes up. So, you know, in, in some retrospect, it's like <sighs> cool that you guys were, you know, COVID free, but what is happening, which we're going to get into now. So, they're saying, no, this didn't really come from somebody that traveled in that we know of uh, because they have been very restrictive on travel, at least for tourism. So they were hoping that because they have, you know, what many of us are seeing in our own countries of airplanes landing, the, te- the, 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 the temperature tests and stuff like that at the questionnaire. They're like, we did all the right things and we clearly were doing something right because we were so long without COVID cases. Right. So it couldn't have come in from a foreign nation, which a lot of people are saying, naysayers are like, not BS. Either two things, either you guys were fudging the numbers or it did come in um, and you guys are not admitting that maybe your policies are not what you say they are. So, you know, like any country, you're going to have people, you know, they're conspiracy theories people and then you're going to have the people that really don't know what the hell is going on, right? Even if they're doctors. So what can we take away from this? In my opinion, and, you know, it, it's something that, you know, maybe even you would agree, maybe you'll disagree, but let's get into those uh, few points. One, when they were at level one, there are pictures that, you know, that they show that the country was pretty much back in, in what do you call, call, consider normal conditions, right? People were going, you know, right about their normal life. People were back at work, uh, movie theaters, you know, uh, I don't know, bars, um, nightlife, all that was pretty much normal. Now, they were pushing or rather encouraging social distancing they were saying hey you know maybe you should wear a mask by the way it wasn't mandated like now you see in many states here in california but they were saying hey you should 
again at a level one. So what happens? Um, let's be honest. What will happen here? The day any of our states, I mean, hell, I think it has already happened, are like, hey, we haven't had anything happen in our county, right? Or any in our little town or in our entire state. Why should we suffer because California or New York or this? We that leave us alone. We're gonna close off our state. And then what do you think is gonna happen? Most of the people, if not already, they're urging to go back to normal. They're gonna just go back to normal. Which then what you know what they're thinking now, by the way, or at least some people are at, at this point. It's just a theory. Is there was uh what do you call dormant carriers, which is essentially in young people. When they, you know, they don't really have too many symptoms. And we know this now, even from Trump and, and Fauci saying it, it doesn't really attack uh, the, 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 the young, uh, gener- you know, the young rather uh, uh, population as much as it attacks the older. And when, especially when it comes to symptoms, you can be asymptomatic and even have the symptoms fully active if you're a young individual and healthy health trump today by the way it's like hey these guys are in sports you know whatever these are the guys that can go back right or whatever um even other people have been saying that but what that's what they're saying is that those young individuals that maybe they are carrying uh what you consider more of a dormant um or dormant carriers can then later on pass it on to someone that's older that will show the symptoms like this uh person that they're talking about the 50 year old something that maybe does have underlying conditions, and then it just comes back up. People, it, it just resurfaces. So again, there are some people saying it never went away. It didn't come in. It has always been among us. Um, because we went to a level one, we were kind of like, yeah, we're good. You know, it's sorry the rest of the world, but we're fine. So let's go back to oops, oops, oops. and it's like I are closed, and it's like eating, sharing. And it's like try this, try try it. Let's <laughs> just share it. Let's you know, and it's like boom, baby. You have it, I have it, we have it, you all have it. And, you know, it's unfortunate. This is not something that I don't want you to come across like this. I'm not celebrating. No one should be celebrating that a country that thought that they had it under control. It's like, damn it. <clears throat> yeah, so we have four cases. Um, but it's also something that us here, and even in if your own country, if you're seeing this from somewhere, you're like, dude, we're fine as well. Maybe we should consider and look at more. Right. That maybe, you know, having these precautions that are, are, are they're telling us right to take these precautions of cover your mouth. You know, I know you can't breathe. I understand that it's difficult. I'm going to be honest with you. I go to the store. I put it on. And whenever I can, I'm like, as it is, I can't breathe sometimes, you know, so I'm just like, you know, so I get it. I am with some of the people. That are like, I can't breathe. It is true. It's a pain in the ass. Um, but it doesn't mean that I'm going to be like, I can't breathe. Shit. No, no. Come on now. You know, it doesn't mean that it means you, you, you deal with it. If you're going to be going out, it means social distancing means social distancing. It doesn't mean like, hey, we're social distancing, right? Right. Like there's not 60 people in here in a room that's like maybe 10 by 10. Come on. You know, that's some of the stuff that we can take away from this, you know, and that's what even again, people from New Zealand, if you go, by the way, there's these pictures that are showing that people are going right back into panic mode. Hopefully this time, not with the TP. Right. Where people are going to be like, what did we do last time? Toilet paper. It's like, you know, put it down. Remember last time we had like freaking 40 rolls at home. We still have them from the last time we, you know, we bought them. But it does mean that people are going back into panic mode. And, and it's natural. I wouldn't want to see that happening here. Right. Uh, which is why I guess Fauci is saying with the whole Russia thing that they're they now have a pill and that or not pill, excuse me, uh, vaccine. People are saying Ah, don't go into saying that you have like the magic potion because then that's a, you see New Zealand, ah, that can happen. So, you know, here in the United States, personally speaking, I am going to say be skeptical when you hear that, hey, there's this state, this town that has been, you know, free, COVID free, you know, don't act like, hey, we should move there or go there or whatever they're doing, we should do because it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to apply to us and it's going to work 100%. It means that right now, more than ever, we should learn from these areas, from these locations. You as an individual, you should definitely not be lazy and go on like I did. Go into their you know Twitter accounts for people in New Zealand. Change your uh, your your internet you know location to New Zealand and start seeing what the media there are saying. Take both perspectives from New Zealand's right media and from their left media and see what people are saying because that's what maybe all of us should be doing. So that's what the, the whole point of like, what can you learn from New Zealand? Go learn from New Zealand. 
There you go. I told you. All right, guys, that is it for today. Thanks for watching the, the JTH show or listening to the JTH show. As always, please uh, like and subscribe. And like always, thank you for all the support. And uh, until this time, until next time, see ya.